I'm reading this. Welcome everyone to our Monday Night Ignite, which we just love to share with you. Uh, we have a great health and business section for you tonight. So we're gonna start out with the health side of things. And I have the massive privilege of teaching with my illustrious colleague, the incredible Stacy Kimbrell, who, as you know, uh, loves to research and is full of knowledge that she loves to share. And we love to teach together because um, we both love the research and all the things, right? So uh, everything you see in here tonight, tonight, know that we kicked out 10 times that much. <laughs> because it wasn't compliant. Okay, so tonight we are going to be sharing about diffusing for your health, and it sounds like, oh yeah, I know about diffusing, but we're going to give you the hows, the whens, and the whys, pretty much starting out with the whys. Uh, so I'm going to, we're just going to go back and forth sharing with you, and we have a lot of great information tonight. So we're excited that this is recorded so that you can share this with your friends as well. So let's get started. Okay. Oops. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this one right here. You guys, this is for your entertainment only by no way, shape or means are we here to uh, diagnose, treat, try to cure, prevent dis-ease in your body. You have to remember that per the FTC, the, um, the CDC, the FTA, we are not allowed to do that, okay? We are just uh, friends and moms and women and men and whoever on this call that have had personal experiences and that we're so excited to share with you our experiences so we can hopefully help you um, and however you want help. Right, so what are essential oils? If you are new to Young Living, you might be thinking those things that just smell good, but <laughs> what they are, they are aromatic concentrated plant extracts that are carefully obtained through di steam distillation, cold pressing from our, like our uh, citrus oils or resin tapping. And these oils are made from the steam, uh, through the steam, through the leaves, flowers, fruits, bark, and resin, and so much more of all of the plants there. So essential oils must have optimal levels of specific naturally occurring constituents, not added to later, but naturally occurring constituents to maximize their potency and the wellness properties that we are looking to them for. That's right. Uh, I love that essential oils are not something new. Uh, they date back to... Uh, 350 BC, that's before Christ, the ancient Egyptians, uh, the Asian cultures, uh, what's the one? Oh my gosh, I just saw this thing in the, now I just forgot it, Peruvian? Persian. Per Persian? The Peru, oh my gosh, we're, we're at a museum and they literally had this jar and it was talking about how they had uh, ancient oils in it. And it was just like, are you kidding me? This is a museum. I got a picture somewhere. I should have put it in here. But anyhow, they used oils for many different things, uh, for spiritual, for healing, embalming, spirit, uh, or said spiritual practices. When you look at the embalming reasons why they used oils, and you really even go do some research, I have a great handout on that, but do some research on that. You can see why they would use them because the body can't decay, this and that, whatever. We can't say all these things, but why we can use them, we don't need to be embalmed at this time but it prevented certain things from happening so that the body could still be preserved, right? Obviously the oils were given to uh, Jesus uh, by the three wise men and they were given, the, given in the resin form, but uh, there was vats found in the area with actual essential oil vats. So even in King Tut's tomb, they found huge alabaster jars full of actual oil in these jars of how long ago, right? So this is not something new. This is spoken to existence and it's still here. And so a lot of times people say this is alternative medicine, but really it's not because it was here from the beginning, right? So it's really ex exciting that we use this right now these days, what we're allowed to say with relaxation, emotional support, uh, physical and spiritual and mental wellness. Yes, and so why essential oils? Maybe you have used herbs in the past, or uh, different 
healing things from nature, but essential oils provide support for every system in the body. They naturally detox the body. They support our brain health, very key. Uh, multiple ways we can apply them. They bypass digestion. So if you have a hard time with your digestive system, you don't have to rely on that like you would a capsule or something, right? Uh, they are adaptogenic, which means they do what needs to be done and very helpful for stress. They carry nutrients to your cells. They are simple to use. They replace harmful chemicals. They calm the mind and body. They provide more restful sleep. They're high in antioxidants. They assist and support the immune system and they promote positive emotions and reduce stress levels. What is not to love? If it did only one of those things, it would still be worth our while. Totally. And what's really important is that we make sure of what we're using and we'll be telling you why in a second. There's four different main grades of essential oils. We here at Young Living have premium grade essential oils and these are the best. And we are, I believe, the world leader in essential oils. We have been here for years. We have established, which I'm getting ahead of myself, the seed to seal practice. And there's a caring about the, our oils. Um, and so if you're getting lesser grades or floral water, um, you know, that's not going to have the same kind of potency. And a lot of essential oils have added uh, colors and flavors. Like I just got a, a lavender essential oil from somebody. It's not Young Living's, of course, and it's purple. It's like, okay, well, lavender oil is not purple. Okay. So you know, there's a lot of things that are added into them that if you're using these oils in the ways that we're going to be describing to you in a second, um, and they're not pure, and they're not premium grade, then they could actually do more harm than good. So we want to make sure that we stick with the premium grade essential oils. Yes. And so why Young Living? Because now there are a lot of oil companies in the business. Why? Because they work. Uh, and they have been watching us since 1994. Uh, I'm almost uh, in January, it'll be 20 years that I've been with Young Living and Stacy and Pamela have been with Young Living for many, many years as well. Uh, and nowhere else will we go because we know we have been to the farms, we have seen it all. And that is why Young Living is the premium uh, world leader in premium essential oils. The world leader in essential oils, that be us because of our pioneering uh, in the industry, thanks to our founder, Gary Young, and 28 years of stability that include integrity, purpose, and passion. In 2020, we accepted $2.2 billion in sales, and uh, we have 10 corporate farms and 15 partner farms, which is very important to our seed to seal process. Uh, on top of the amazing support staff we have at Young Living Corporate, uh, we're very thankful for them here in all the fields, whether that's our farm fields uh, or out here in our homes. I know there's many people uh, have been to the farms uh, before, probably on this call. And it was such a blessing that just recently there was a few of us who got to go out to Idaho to the Melissa farm. And I mean, just with the, I got to spend time there with Jeanette. Pam couldn't go that trip, so it was such a bummer because that would have been great as well. And there was other fantastic people there. And literally, uh, I re recorded each person and I said, uh, you know, they're usually used to the normal questions. I said, why do you stay with Young Living? And like every single person that was just not all together, they like cried about it. They're like, we love Young Living. We love the purity. We love the intention behind it and the, the whole seed to seal quality commitment. And this is Young Living statement. So I'll just read this to you in case you can't see it very well. It says Young Living understands the seed to seal process it takes to harvest essential or essential oils with premium quality giving our company and our families the gift from the earth. So it's really important that we understand, that you understand that we have a whole seal seed process. We actually cultivate it, which any of you guys can go to these farms and uh, take part in these things too. We distill it, we test it, and we seal it up to be bottled to go out to the market. You have to know that these oils are non-GMO. These are hand-picked seeds. I couldn't even believe it when we were at the Melissa field and the lavender, um, you have all these trays full of it and they hand-pick which is the hardiest plant before they go plant it. And we got to plant some too. And so all of this huge process, Young Living, because of Gary, knows when to plant it, uh, 
when to harvest it, the specific day, time, hour, all of that. And it's just an amazing process. If you don't know, please go to seetoseal.com and learn more about that. I love that. Here's the other thing I love about Young Living. This is our Young Living Foundation. This is ties back into why Young Living. And this is why, because 100% of our donations, thanks to Young Living Corporate, paying all of the administrative costs for our foundation. But 100% of your donation goes to our uh, mission and service projects that help save, change, and empower underserved communities right here in the U.S. as well as around the world. So in 2020, we had over $8.2 million received in donations. Uh, and since 2017, uh, when we really started <laughs> keeping notes on how many people we've been serving, but it's over a million dollars, uh, excuse me, a million lives globally and in 32 countries, those have all been positively impacted in a huge way. So we're super grateful. It's just amazing. I love the foundation. Um, you remember who, who here got to put in the comments if you got to um, help with the soul to hope. Soul to hope, the making the show. Soul, soul hope. Soul hope. That sounds better. Soul hope. That was like so much fun and just being a part of cutting out all the stuff for all the shoes we made. Um, I can't wait to go to Nigeria. I want to go to Nigeria so bad. I have for years. So anyhow, we'll be doing that sometime. Young Living has over 600 essential oil infused products. The essential oils are infused, whether it's the cleaning or the baby line or for the animals, targeted support. That's if you need it for certain things. We have a sleek weight management program, our, even our makeup. All of this is like amazing essential oil infused, which helps it deliver what it's trying to do for you and make sure that everything is clean. Like I've been using Thieves Cleaning. Uh, since I got into Young Living, and believe me, I almost wanted to start Bleach Anonymous because it, I came from a bleach family, okay? And salmonella poisoning like all the time. So for me to even not use that anymore and have not for 15 years is like amazing. So we have 90 oils that are singles. We have 89 blends and 47 plus or vitality, which we'll go through that in a little bit. Um, they're labeled for dietary supplement. You take them internally. And then I love our CBD products because I cannot have any kind of THC. Um, and so our CBD, all of our CBD products are 100% THC free. So there's no way that you can have some kind of negative side effect from it. And for all ages and for pets, like we use this for our dog, Russell, if it's thundering or a leaf blows by or whatever, because he's a little skittish. And so um, firework time, and it works just amazing. He actually comes looking for it. So we have a lot of great products to cover almost anything you need in your household. Love it. Now, just a quick reminder, vitality labels versus color labels, right? A white label versus a color label uh, that when we're talking about a vitality in the white label, that means we're talking about something that we can internally use, dietarily use, right, ingest. Um, a colored label is meaning that it's something that we can do topically or aromatically. So, uh, but same oil inside both bottles. Okay. So <laughs> nothing different in them. We just have to have different labels for the government. Uh, but we're going to be mainly talking about the aromatic benefits tonight in our diffusing. All right. So let's kick off some diffusing situations. Sorry, you're muted, babe. Okay, I was gonna have you translate for me. Sorry, I said I love you uh, and your humor, but I'll get moving. Studies have shown that by inhaling an essential oil, you can shift your emotions in less than one second. I know that sounds really hard to believe, but I remember I was somewhere and someone came in late, which it was like to a class, so they already felt a little bit uncomfortable, but I knew they were coming from a funeral. I've never met this person before. So as soon as she sat down, you could see that she was a little overwhelmed and whatnot. I just gave her in two seconds. I said, smell peace and calming and stress away. I said, which one do you like the smell of better? And she said this, whatever, which one it was. And I just put a couple of drops in her hand. And I just had her rub it three times. And I just had her, I said, I want you to breathe in deep. And she took this one giant bat, breath through her nose, but she already breathed in the other two just for a second, right? 
And she literally put her hands down. I remember this. And she's like, I feel so much better. And her shoulders just relaxed. And I was like, what? I was like, already? You want to take another breath first? You know? And of course, I had to breathe in 10 times to the nose and 10 times to the mouth because I always do that. But within that first breath, uh, she already felt a huge difference. So when I saw the study, you know, if I would have saw it first, I probably think it's a little rubbish, but it's not like literally that quick. Things can start to shift in your body. Love that. So let's talk about how quickly do they work? In four to 10 seconds, just inhaling an oil. So through the lungs, it will reach the brain in four to 10 seconds. In three to five minutes, when we are snorting something, shall we say, right? So straight out, snorting something up there via the blood through the nose. We'll get to that in a minute. Three to five minutes, it is uh, taken some residents up in the brain. And then if we're taking something internally, seeing a capsule or, you know, our nice vitality label, same oil, uh, internally like that, 20 to 30 minutes, it reaches the brain, right? Via the digestive tract. So when we're talking about diffusing tonight, look at how fast that has an impact on our bodies and our cells. And are you making those stats up? Uh, that'd be no. <laughs> we were doing some Google Scholar work. Uh, yeah, real, real science for this, and we have the links to prove it. So it's this is like amazing that these are not just, you know, natural minded folks that are just making up numbers here. This is like the real deal. In fact, a lot of this work has been done uh, with chemicals for like addictive things as well as nicotine, a lot of the these things, okay? And right now, I'm going to give a, a plug to uh, Dr. Doug Corrigan. He spoke many times here on Monday Night Ignite, um, and you can go get all of his uh, past things, and you can go to his website, which is starfishsense.com. It's on the slide down at the bottom, um, and he has a great program that if you just want to educate yourself or fa family and friends, he has videos and all the handouts, and he has great books, um, and it's just, he has fantastic material, Okay. So this is something that he said that we could sh um, share that from his studies and he's a PhD and he's like a, all these fat letters after his name. Okay. So dude is like really amazing with all his information, but we're talking about absorption rate fastest to slowest in the body. So if you want something to be released for a long time throughout the day, then we'll just go to 13 or we'll go to 11 right now. You'd put it on the bottom of your feet because you're skin is thicker there, right? It's going to take more time to absorb through your body and it will actually do it longer throughout the day. Where, if you happen to be a man here, if you got a husband and say, hey, honey, let me put some, you need some fast relief, put it on the scrotum, right? Their testicles, why not? Now you may have to have a carrier oil to go there, right? Because if you're trying to put lemongrass there, it's gonna be pretty hot. But there are oils that uh, men use for certain reasons uh, on their testicles. Uh, to help them with their health that do not burn. Okay, just so you know, but you can always have a carrier oil nearby. Now, this was not in the study, uh, but it is a true statement because this study did not test female parts, but the labia, if you put the oils on that area, it's gonna absorb just as fast. And uh, if you're new to it, you may wanna have some carrier oil. I had that experience by someone on this call who introduced me to spraying essential oils there uh, this summer. And I was like, whoa. So, but if you can imagine when you're talking about fast absorption, if you need it for certain reasons, it really is amazing. But next we can go to the armpit, right? And then the ear canal, this is why I wanna make sure I really tell you about this, is you never put oils inside your ear, okay? If you had some on your finger and you were rubbing it around in the front and the back, like number six, and you had, and you went like this, and your finger wasn't dripping, you could do it. You could put it on a cotton ball, make sure it's not juicy. And you could put a cotton ball with essential oil on your ear. I've done that a number of times, but never, 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 even though we have, and this is a reason why we have like the purest essential oils here and they're not cut with anything. And the ear canal uh, and the eardrum is not suitable for the power of which these oils have, okay? Just putting your ear like this, you can like fear, feel like peppermint going through it, I swear. So, but never pouring it in, okay? The scalp, the forehead, the jawline, the inner side of the elbow, which is like your heart point, 
your abdomen, and of course, other places. Great other places that were not included in the study were the pulse points, which is your neck, your carotid artery. This is fast absorbing because you have big blood vessels, the inside of your wrist, the inside of your femoral artery, the inside of your ankles, behind your knees. These are great places as well. And interesting enough, we just sort of talked about the FDA and the FTC and all this kind of stuff. And Danette just shared with you the topical oils versus the internal oils. So this is a quiz real quick. If I'm gonna put oils underneath my tongue, would I use the Vitality, which is the white label? You can put white label, or would you use the brown label? Okay, real quick. We'll see if anyone gets it here. So uh, I hate to tell the answer already. Oh, wrong. Everyone who's saying Vitality is wrong. You wanna know why? Is because the FDA says that if you just put it underneath your tongue, it's not inside your body yet. Go figure, right? So it's just, it's funny and interesting, of course, you can, uh, I would use either oil personally, but it's interesting. I just want to share with you that because that's their rules. Their rules. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, how cell membranes work. Let's talk about this for a minute because uh, there's about a hundred trillion cells that make up the human body. And one drop of our essential oil contains 40 million trillion molecules. I don't even know how many zeros that is, but more than I can count. One drop of our essential oil can cover every cell in our body with 40,000 molecules. <clears throat> that is a ton. So the cell membrane, right? So the membrane around the cell separates the material inside from the outside of the cell. It controls the passage of materials in and out of the cell, right? Create has a little channel there. The cell membrane is a double layer of phospholipid molecules. So proteins in the cell membrane, they just lined up like little Minutemen there, uh, provide structural support. They form channels for the passage of materials, right? Like calcium and uh, phosphorus and all the good things like that that need to come in and out. They act as receptor sites. They function as carrier molecules and they provide identification markers like stop here, calcium, we need calcium, so come on in here. With about 1 million different proteins in a cell, essential oil molecules are lipophilic. So what that means is that they can actually permeate and dissolve right into the lipid membrane. So they don't have to have a certain channel. Isn't that amazing? So that is what makes them cross things like a blood brain barrier and be so effective within a cell. Yeah, and when you when you think about Western medis, medicine, they have um, they have the ability to uh, interact with the one cell target. So there's no synergy. So uh, in my other presentation, I had one about clove, right? So clove has many different properties. And eugenol is the main property that dental takes out, which uh, they use that for the numbing properties in uh, Novocaine when you go to the dentist, right? But clove has, I don't, I don't know how many, but let's just say 28, um, I'm sure there's more than that, 28 properties that go along with that. So if they were using it as the whole source, you would get all the benefits of clove, but they're extracting the one part out so that they can make a medicine that you can charge for because you can't patent a natural substance, right? So they can't patent clove, but before we had Novocaine, that's what they used for dentistry was clove way back in the day for helping for numbing, right? So uh, where natural medicine has hundreds of compounds that interact with the cells and they all work synergistically together. So free range essential oils. I just thought that title was really funny because we think about free range chickens, right? Okay, if you, I'm sure you guys have heard that term. So my term is free range essential oils. That means they can go anywhere in your body, okay? And except for the ears, but when you take them inside or breathe them in, they're gonna go circulate where they need to go, okay? And so essential oils are small. They're 50 times smaller than a cell. They come in different shapes and sizes and are lipid, lipophilic, uh, which means they love the lipids and the fats, which Danette was just talking about. They have 20 to 300 different constituents in 
each essential oil. Each one has something different. This is where you really got to go study one day and look up uh, monoterpenes and sesquinterpenes and all the different constituents in an essential oil. It's literally like so much fun, even if you're really not into science. It's just fascinating. They have hundreds of compounds that interact with the cells, targeting, uh, target simultaneously. And once again, they have free range access. That means they can go anywhere they want. So it's just, it's exciting to really know that. Love that. All right, let's talk about the limbic system because the limbic system is the part of the brain that is primarily responsible for our emotional life and also controls functions like adrenaline flow, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, as well as the sense of smell, right? From our olfactory nerve. So if we look at the uh, limbic system here, we see all the different parts of it, the orbital frontal cortex, which perceives smell, and that is involved in the formation of memories. That's where I always think of when you smell a certain kind of cookie that your grandma used to make. It takes you back to that age and that place right there with that smell, because smell links with memory there. In the hippocampus, this is where our long-term memory is stored. In the insular cortex, it's associated with desires and cravings and addictions. In the cingulate gyrus, this is perception of neuropathic pain and proprioception, right? So that is how we uh, perceive pain. The amygdala is where fear and anxiety, uh, the response system happens there. And then the olfactory bulb, right? Which is actually has little bitty nerves that come out through the cribriform plate in our skull. And so when we breathe in, that is the only outside uh, area where our brain can connect with the outside world. So this is where we receive our olfactory input. Uh, this is where smells are detected there in the nasal cavity going up into the sinuses. And research at New York University proved that the amygdala gland, right? Uh, which is the gland in the limbic system of the brain that stores and releases trauma in the body, but that this amyg excuse me, the amygdala does not respond to sound, sight, or touch, but only releases emotional trauma through the sense of smell. Amazing. So what else do you know of in the world that helps release emotional trauma and it has to be through smell. Mm. Nothing that I know of. It's so amazing when you think, I believe, you know, that this was spoken to existence on the third day and it was here for a plan and for a purpose. And if we didn't have the scent of smell or we didn't have things that can help release these traumas or just in everyday life and just feeling peaceful and calming just by inhaling it for one second, I mean, it's just, it's just so amazing to me when you really think about that. And obviously how many people can be helped with this just by using the right thing. Anyhow, it's quite amazing. Still talking about the Olympic system. I love this little picture here. You can see uh, the oil molecules going in through the body. And, you know, we think they're, they're not just going to get stuck right here. They're going to go in remembering. Um, I don't know if we have another, I, oh, we're coming up to the lungs. I won't talk about it. I want to get ahead of myself. Uh, but what they do when you breathe in here, so they're very uh, receptive, uh, obviously the smell, the appetite, hunger, thirst, you know, peppermint's supposed to help you not want to uh, have food cravings if you're hungry, right? So I remember if we were being in the car and our children be like, I'm starving, I'm like, here, smell some peppermint, put on your tongue, <laughs> try to ward them off for a little while. It helps with sleep, it helps with dreams, emotional responses, sexual behavior, addictions, motivation. Um, I know Brittany, my good friend, she loves the motivation oil. Um, and we're going to be talking about smells and different things if you like them or not. So someone remind me about motivation oil when we get there. Uh, memory processing. This is like amazing. Social uh, cogn cognition. Cognition. Can I say that right? Uh, you're helping with personalities, uh, learning I know that I use these things for learning and retaining. So I have for the last 15 years. And it's amazing how it can help autonomic functions. I don't know, I'm not sure if I should say the rest of that. Um, and it does really help with autonomic functions. I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be there. 
Okay. Yes. So let's talk about uh, loving our lungs because the lungs absorb oxygen from the air we breathe, right? And then it's transferred into the bloodstream so that it can get to every part of your body, including the brain. So diffusing of essential oils is effective due to the incredible surface area and permeability of our lung tissue. So 22,000 breaths every 24 hours is what we normally take. And the lung surface area covers about 750 square meters, meters excuse me, uh, I think that's the feet, excuse me, not meters. Uh, and that is uh, about the size of a tennis court. So if you've been on a tennis court lately, you'll know uh, that if you strung out all the alveoli and uh, bronchioles and everything in your lungs, you could cover that tennis court. So that is how much surface area we have and why it is important about being careful of what we actually breathe, right? So our lungs have 300 to 70, 780 million air sacs, which have their own surface area, right? So incredible uh, ap options there. Uh, but this is again, why we wanna be sure what we are breathing is good for us because some things we can avoid, some things we can't avoid. So we wanna be putting good things in us. And so as the cells in your body work, they actually produce a waste right? A gas called carbon dioxide that we all know that is released in the bloodstream. So uh, I love that we can up our oxygen. We can do things that are positive for that to help our body deal with that waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's literally amazing to think literally four seconds when you breathe in something that goes into your lungs and it's already uptaking to the bloodstream. That's like incredible. So think about good versus bad, you know, I was just doing, uh, you know, obviously I love teaching on cancer too. So smoking, what that does, secondhand smoke, what that does, obviously that would be a negative, um, you know, candles, there's all these different things, uh, standing by a bus depot at the airport when you come out and all that funk, oh my gosh, like that's the time to wear a mask or something over your face, right? So it's like being aware that good or bad, uh, it's going to have an effect on your body in your bloodstream within four seconds. And we already know what we say uh, was what uh, the studies we found two or five to 10 seconds into your brain, right? So if you're breathing in paint, um, can you feel that already, you know, and what that does? So it's really ama amazing. The fastest route to the circulation, which is your bloodstream throughout your whole body. So very exciting. So also through the circulatory system, right? This is the transportation system of our body, right? So the, the heart pumps and the blood carries oxygen, chemicals, cellular waste, everything to the liver uh, that gets dumped into the, the gut and lymphatic system to get out of the body. So essential oil molecules go, go throughout your circulatory system uh, when you use them topically, internally, and aromatically. And as we just learned by that three to five seconds, aromatically is the fastest way. So what we want is we want that permeation uh, into our cells. And that's why diffusing is so key because they love to interact with the lipids, fats, right? Around each cellular wall. So I love circulation oils, like uh, supporting oils, cypress, lemongrass, grapefruit, basil, all, all good things. We just want to make sure that they get in our tissue and diffusing is where we have it. So let's talk about something that most people, if they're new to, to essential oils and certainly to Young Living, like they just think of maybe a diffuser as something that smells good. Yeah. And obviously it's, it's much more than that and what we need to really be aware of. i loved ca candles i love candles and i have one for you here today this smells so amazing and this is a pure beeswax candle right so if you have a pure beeswax candle then go for it but otherwise and, well let me not say go for it let me start over we want to trash our paraffin and i used to love the hand dips when you we used to do it as a family and the paraffin wax that's not good for you unfortunately soy candles are not good for you they do release a lot of chemicals, benzene, tulene, the soot, the lead. A lot of the, um, the wicks right here have a lead 
uh, component that comes out of it. And so these are released into the air. We're breathing them in. They're zytoestrogens. They affect our bodies, our hormones, our brain. Uh, I mean, your whole body's like run on hormones here. Male or female, none of us need extra estrogen, right? So we want to be aware of what we're doing. And uh, the scented plugins, like I used to use all of this kind of stuff myself. And I promise you, it was like, now if I go into a space where that is, like, uh, like I used to love to go to Pier One, it's like one of my favorite stores. But if I went in there, I had to go right when they opened up and I'd wear like a giant like scarf around my nose and face and I'd have oils on it because the time I'd leave that place, it would be like I'd have this massive headache, migraine. It's just from breathing in these poor chemicals. I call them cancer sticks when those like reeds with, or I used to love too, what's that stuff called? Um, incense. You just cannot go buy incense. Like you have to um, use clean choices here aerosol sprays, perfumes. I used to wear perfume. I don't anymore. I use the oils as perfume, smoking, vaping, uh, the bug sprays. And I always love, if you can't pronounce it, that you shouldn't eat it, wear, it, drink it, or any of that, right? Uh, the bug sprays, if you actually go read the back of the label, it says um, has, hazardous to humans and domestic animals, even the off-brand, which is like literally outrageous. And so you want to be aware that this doesn't just affect us as humans, it affects our pets. Um, you know, if we're cleaning with toxic chemicals, if we're using air fresheners, and especially they are so much more receptive um, or overwhelmed by the sense. And our animals, you know, obviously have the same, they're given the same kind of medications and they have same, same kind of diseases as human has because they're doing the same stuff that the humans are doing, right? They're probably eating sometimes not the best choice foods and breathing in this and using chemicals and the dogs are absorbing this heavily in cats. So you want to be careful, especially with domestic animals of what we're using in, in your household, in your body. Why this matters is so, so, so important. You can go research this for yourself. In 1976, there was a law passed for the, it's called the Toxic Substance Control Act and over 100,000 chemicals were grandfathered in. And to date, only 3,000 have ever been tested. Now what's even literally more crazy is that when there's something new that comes on the market for food, drinks, colors, flavors, whatever, the FDA tells the company, let's just say I just made a new candle, or I just made a new orange juice thing. They have to, the company is responsible for testing their products and make sure there's no adverse effects and that they're using clean, pure, straight products and no chemicals, right? It's only if the FDA gets enough uh, calls for, of complaints, will they go research that company or that product. So they rely in good faith measures that a company will put out a good product. That's just outrageous and rubbish. Even when we had uh, the situation with the virus going on not too long ago, last couple of years, right? And all these companies were flooding, putting uh, hand sanitizers on the market. There was a hundred, or excuse me, 222 hand sanitizers that were recalled by the FDA and the chemicals in them were literally outrageous, but they weren't tested ahead of time. And so not until they got enough complaints about certain things did, you know, they stop. So the importance of understanding all this is that we're something called body burden. And so when we're accidentally or unknowingly, or even, of course, even knowingly uh, poisoning ourselves a little bit each day, that it starts to have a huge effect on our body and on our person. So when my kids were born, I gave them this and I had my candle going. And then I rubbed this little lotion on them and I gave them a bath and this, and then I gave them some uh, Hawaiian punch. And that, I mean, I just kept setting them up for failure until I learned about uh, young living actually in chemical awareness when they're eight and 12. And now they're 23 and 27. So I had to go backwards and build up that firm foundation of good nutrition, which anyone here can do no matter what age you are, you can start that process today, which is very exciting. Um, the toxin pathways into our body, this is just a visual, but you got to understand that the pesticides in our um, that are coming in our soil and going into our water supply. Do you know, even in the Antarctica, they found uh, uh, Prozac, birth control, and gosh, it was something else. I'm sorry, I forgot now. Um, 
in the penguins when they were tested. Like that shouldn't even be getting over there. But you know, if you if you don't remember science and how the water table system works that goes underneath, you know, around the whole world, like it, there's a whole movement of how this goes. The air pollution, car pollution, and this is all being absorbed. The electronics, EMFs, all of this is affecting us greatly on a daily basis. And there's so much more of it now than when our grandparents were here. Totally. So um, let's talk about nanomaterials right now, uh, because there are so many things. I want to read this for you that we found in a peer reviewed journal. The rapid pace of introduction of new nanomaterials into commerce. Nanomaterials means uh, like microscopic, okay? But this release is rising in the human, uh, our human exposure through consumer products and the absence of reliable safety data or exposure regulations that have raised risk assessments to a top priority for stakeholders in the allied nanomaterial fields, right? Just meaning none of this stuff is actually uh, we don't know of its safety or or it's how bad it is right complete animal-based study excuse me complete animal-based safety testing of the virtually limitless number of potential engineered nanoparticles and derivative microscale particles is widely recognized as fiscally and temporarily impossible which means it'll never happen certainly for uh, even a fraction of them. So you can find that information where we just put that there. But in com consumer products, we're just thinking food, paints, you know, inks and toners that were around, uh, all of these things, plastics, toys, anything that is off gassing, all right? So this is why we talk about off gassing and our homes actually being more toxic than outside air, even in dense cities. So this is again, why we want to be diffusing. Very much so. Who's doing trauma today? <laughs> okay, I'm doing trauma. Emotional trauma. Does anyone have any that they can remember at all? And if you can't, that is just amazing and fantastic. And if you can, there are things that we can do for this. What Danette was just talking about how it affects, uh, how the olfactory bulb and how that only through the sense of smell, you can actually change things and memories in your body and create new memories in your body. So if you have a traumatic experience with something, let's just use a dogs, okay? So that's an easy one. Uh, or going on an airplane or something like that. If you love the smell of orange or tangerine or lavender, you can use that on your person, breathe it in before you go into that setting. Of course, do your affirmations, pray about it, meditate on it of what you need to do to be able to get on that airplane or to go see that little doggy um, and not have fear of it. And so I've had that personal experience. I was, uh, I'm supposed to die in 10 minutes if I get stung by a being. And the first time I went to the silver club, we're in this giant field of uh, lavender. And of course you're walking out there with Gary Young and he's like got you in the middle of the field and all this kind of stuff. And of course, everyone's talking excited. I never looked down. As soon as he stopped and said, I want you guys just to sit here and feel the energy and listen and the negative ions and all this kind of stuff. And all I heard was, and I was like, what the heck? I was like, there's bees, giant bees like everywhere. And then there's a guy from Hong Kong. He came over and he said, what's going on? He said, you look a little freaked out. I was like, I'm going to die. I'm like, I'm looking back at the field where we came. And I thought, yeah, it's too far to run back there. And surely something's going to get me by then. So he said, calm down. He said, I want you to sit among the bees. I said, dude, you're nuts. I don't even know you. He said, breathe in. What do you smell? I said, lavender. He said, sit down and relax. He said, besides, he said, these bees don't want you. They want the lavender. And so he got me calmed down to sit in that field of lavender. I got to breathe in the lavender. I got to appreciate and look at these bees. And literally, I'm not scared of bees anymore. So and I was fearful for a long time with this because, you know, of course, there are reasons. Who wants to die, right? So just by smelling in the real plant, the oils, so much can happen with emotional traumas. If there's a child or a person who can't describe or explain, you still can use oils aromatically and on their person to help them with situations, and it will just go do what it needs to do because it was spoken to exist and it was created for us and it knows, uh, has the intelligence to know what to do, which is really exciting. Totally, let's talk about negative ions and positive ions. 
uh, and when in diffusing how we can help support and or combat things, right? So negative ions are produced naturally by wind and rain and water movement. They help stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, right? So that is our, the part of our nervous system which controls things that we can't control, right? We can control moving our arm, but we can't control things like uh, uh, sh shutting the brain or breathing or our heart beating, things like that, right? So that also controls our, our rest, our digestion, right? That is all parasympathetic. So we have a bunch of different oils that are very supportive for that, that would be great to diffuse like bergamot, cedarwood, citronella, eucalyptus, so many of the citrus oils, right? Grapefruit, lemon, lemongrass, orange, lavender, patchouli, and sandalwood. Very good. Now, positive ions, it's kind of opposite, right? The negative ones are good. Uh, the positive ones are produced by electronic equipment and are typically found in man-made environments. So those are things we need to help our body actually deal with. So those oils that would be helpful would be maybe some frankincense, clove, cypress, helichrysum, juniper, marjoram, melaleuca, which is, of course, tea tree, palmarosa, pine, ravensara, as rosemary, thyme, and ylang ylang. So great diffusing ones when you're in an office environment, when you're inside with a lot of electronics. Those are all great ones to be diffusing. Okay, I want, I want everyone to just close their eyes for a few seconds while I'm playing this, okay? And what in the world? Just close your eyes and listen. And you can open your eyes now. And in the chat, if you want to, or just, you know, really think about I this. We hear it. You couldn't hear it? No, can you do it one more time and turn the volume up? Yeah. Okay, hold on. You can't hear it? What in the daylights? Um, no, okay. We want you to go hear a water, waterfall. <laughs> yeah. We're okay, hold okay, hold up. Okay. Oh, all right. So we can't. All right, yeah. When you guys, when you have what Danette was just talking about is the, the negative ions uh, when you're here, this real quick. When you hear the negative ions, when you're in the forest, when you're breathing the pine trees, these are all negative ions. We usually think of negatives as being negative, but it's not. Like you wanna be in that uh, area where you're grounding and your feet are in the grass and you're feeling the wind and all of that. It makes a huge uh, difference in your body. And the same way with just breathing in a pine tree, when we have the pine oil, it does that same kind of thing for it. And if you're inside in the winter, what I like to do, it's sort of a joke, but not really, because I love the smell of pine and I love being outside and hearing all that noise. You can have that recording. You can listen to a waterfall. You can have a fan blowing on you, right? So you feel like you're, you know, feeling that. And so there's just, there's things you can do that your body naturally responds to that's, that's, uh, relaxing and inviting with a negative ion. So that's exciting. There we go. Love it. So the olfactory response, odorant molecules, right? Anything that carries an odor interact with our olfactory receptor proteins in our nose and in our sinuses there. These proteins reside in about 10 million cells high up in our nasal cavity. And rabbits have uh, about 100 million, right? That's 10 times what we have. And dogs, of course, have over 220 million, right? So our sense of smell or olfactory can be used to tap directly into the limbic system to stimulate memories and emotions. So as you inhale essential oils, the tiny molecules enter the nasal cavity and pass over the olfactory bulb. So this means you can use essential oils to recall memories, both good and bad, 
so that you can process the bad ones, right? Even more amazing, you can use the oils to help release the bad memories, allowing you to actually process and move past them, right? So it is true, essential oil compounds can actually work to repair and reprogram cellular memory. That is so amazing. And some people think that if you can't smell it, it's not gonna work for them. That is literally not true because your sense of these molecules still find a way to get into the limbic system. You're still breathing in through uh, uh, the olfactory system and they're still gonna be stimulated throughout the body and even going out through the same whole process that you does normally if you could smell them. A lot of times you can actually get your smell back by using these. Uh, I've seen that happen many times to people. So it's okay if you can't smell them, they're still gonna have an effect and still work on you, which is obviously amazing. Yeah, so emotional support, right? So they can help our body adapt to stress, to unwind, help feel relaxed, uh, comforted and calm, help us with focus and concentration, help us deal with feelings of abandonment and insecurity, possibly temporary sadness, occasional anxiety. Uh, on the other side of that, help with supporting uh, creativity and uplifting mood feelings. And uh, how about overcoming exhaustion and helping with recovery of that or being stuck? Or because uh, wasn't this where you were gonna talk about motivation oil? Yes, um, oh, thank you. Um, I, I don't like the smell of motivation oil. Uh, so I rub it on like someplace down low or my joke is that may, it motivates me not to have to use it because I don't like the smell. But like Brittany loves the smell of it. And so everyone's different for what we like and don't like, um, but it's just sort of funny. Maybe we don't have time for it, I'll keep going. Um, aromatic, when we're using the oils, like literally just in a simple cotton ball, um, you can place in your air vents when I'm at a hotel, uh, I always bring like a hanky and put oils and I have like little hair clips that go over the vent uh, and the trash can, the linen drawer, like you can do so much, uh, with this. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, dryer balls. And so just everywhere. Okay. So use oils everywhere. That's right. That's right. That's, that just summed up everything. Okay. Uh, fire and vaporizer. Essential oils are fantastic for that. We just want to always make sure that uh, it is like maybe a stainless steel one versus a, a plastic one, right? We don't want to break down the plastic because that's what our oils are breaking down chemicals and plastics are chemicals, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but also always checking the viscosity of the oil. There's some oils like vetiver and myrrh that are super heavy oils and they will not be able to disperse into that. So we wanna look for thinner ones. But the beauty of it is we have over 200 different ones to choose from. So we're gonna find something that is helpful for you. And direct inhaling by putting a drop in your hand. We were always taught and you rub uh, clockwise with your right hand, put it in your left hand, rub clockwise with your right hand three times, and then just really just relax for a second and breathe in three times, five, 10, whatever it is through the nose and in the mouth is like literally amazing. But we use this on like a toilet paper roll. You can, uh, you, I use it in my laundry, like, uh, or excuse me, my dish soap. I love putting like lemongrass or pine because I used to love the smell of pine salt back in the day. Um, you can use it for stain remover and for when you have a glass bottle, you need to get gummy stuff off to clean jewelry. Uh, there's just so many different ways you can use uh, these products for your whole entire house and very uh, cost effective as well and clean. You don't have to worry about using, it gives me peace of mind to be able to use these clean products uh, without chemicals. We're going to talk about a couple things here. One is creating kind of an aroma dome and actually uh, some we know created a product called an aroma dome, which is like a little bitty pup tent, <laughs> but uh, but is not a pup tent, right? So anytime you're looking to create a little environment like that, be sure to use non-toxic coverings, right? So maybe a sheet washed with thieves laundry soap or something, right? Not with gain detergent or something like that, because those are all chemicals 
that you would be also breathing in. Uh, so a commercial pup tent or an um, umbrella has a chemical water resistant coating, right? Uh, or plastic. So we just love to be able to create a concentrated inhaling environment. And this is where we use a cold air nebulizer or an atomizing oil diffuser. So tonight at the time of this airing, uh, this is our, th not Therapro, Aroma Lux oil diffuser, which is on sale. You guys, this was, I don't know, I can't remember, 150 bucks or something like that. Uh, it's now $40 or two for $20 each. How crazy is that? I think it's two for 40, I believe right now. Um, is that right? Or two for 25, something like that. It's crazy. Two for uh, 50. Good. Two for 50. Thank you very much. Am I frozen on there? Are you, um, so, uh, you just pop the bottle in all different settings, but this is why we love this in this environment like this, when we need to take this elsewhere, you actually have a tube that goes right into here. And then the other end right into here, and then we'll actually diffuse out. So you can put this somewhere else if, as you need it to be able to diffuse. So this is what we call an atomizing diffuser. There's no water involved here, right? So uh, you're breathing the pure Young Living essential oils. So be sure to use an intermittent setting. If you are new to oils, make sure that you are having it at the very lowest setting and taking some breaks in there. Now, let's- I have never seen that connector in my entire life. Is that normal? Has anyone else seen this? I have not seen it either. I was gonna ask her where she got it. <laughs> It, com it, com it comes with it. It's only with the Aroma Dome. It comes with the Aroma Dome. If you oh. ordered that from Young Living, did you order yours from Young Living, Danette? I did, That's years ago. Okay, so the, when we ordered from Julie directly, we didn't get that. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, wow. So thank, thank you, Elaine. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I've never seen that. And then I have the new one right here. So this is the same one here. Uh, Bluetooth on. And it has a two different valves with the oils coming out. And I don't, can you guys see it at all? The oil coming out? A little bit, the mist? Someone say yes. Okay. So this is quite amazing. So this is the same kind of diffuser. And it literally, let me just show you. It literally just pops right out. And it has a whole oil bottle in there and there's two canisters for that. So you literally can pop this one out. And so you can have either one oil going or two at the same time. And it's quite amazing. Uh, it has a good weight to it. You have to make sure that you put them back in the right ones. I don't have my glasses on, so I'll just make sure I, I do that right. And it goes on, it has a whole time schedule of if you want to go off every 10 seconds for 20 seconds or whatever it is. So this is really nice. This is the new Duet diffuser. And this is available through Young Living and it's nice and sturdy, has a great little handle for being portable and moving around from spot to spot. Love it. Um, we're gonna talk for a moment and then I believe Stacy's gonna give us a demo. Sorry, we're running a little long here, but we're in good shape. I was thinking that maybe we won't do the demo and we can say that to the end and keep going if you want, right? Okay. I don't know what you wanna do. Oh, that's all good. Let's talk about tent for a minute. This is one of my favorite ways to actually uh, use our oils when we need extra support in the lungs and the sinuses. Uh, and that is boiling some good pure water, right? Not tap water, but uh, purified water and putting that in a glass or even a metal bowl like at your kitchen table and doing just a little splash of any kind of oil I like, Raven or RC or Eucalyptus, Radiata or Globulus, uh, just, a, just a drop there. Uh, close your eyes and put that, uh, a, we call this a tent, right? So you're putting a towel over as you're breathing in the steam that is carrying the oil for us. So it's a beautiful way to help the lungs as you close off your nose and breathe just through the lungs, as well as closing off the mouth and breathing just through the nose to get to the sinuses. Great way to do that. Plus you get a free facial out of the deal. So it's always uh, a bonus right there. All right, 
so directly inhaling from the bottle, which we love to do, right? So of course we can wear it in different things like we'll talk about, but directly inhaling. So I have people, especially with valuable oils, right? Rose oil or something like that, that they do not want to apply it or diffuse it, but, but it's okay. All we actually need to do is smell the oil. Those aromatic compounds are going to all the places that we've talked about tonight. Um, I, you know, the little toilet paper holder got over here. I'm not sure how that happened, but if you just put uh, automatic air, air freshener in the bathroom, which you're perfect place for it, right? Is just putting essential oil on the actual um, cardboard tube inside. And that helps to keep things uh, aerated a little bit. And uh, you know, once again, we just use uh, these oils everywhere. I think we may have a duplicate slide here. And once again, this is safe for pets, right? So even if you're using thieves in the floor or washing the dog dishes with lemon and all this different kind of stuff, it's still healthy and safe. And it once again, gives us also peace of mind uh, for ourselves and our animals. So that is exciting. Love that. So let's talk about the different ways we diffuse, right? Passive diffusing. This is when something is just set in the room with the oil. And that includes just even opening up the bottle and letting it sit there open. Uh, great way to do that. Some of these are actually uh, on sale today for Black Friday. But uh, whether they're clay or fabric or glass, um, they are a fantastic way to have something in a very light way, right? Not, you're not going to smell it like you will diffusing going into the atmosphere right there. And I have this in person for you guys. I just love this. I scored this at a garage sale, which was like, what? So this is actual an inhaler from London, England. Uh, was invented by Dr. Nelson back in the 1860s. And they would actually use steam water and essential oils for helping the body. And it's just like so cool. It has a little thing you take out. This is glass. You put it in here and it's just amazing. So they've been diffusing for a long time, right? That's for sure, right? So uh, if you're new to diffusing in the Young Living World, there are a lot of these around what we call personal diffusing. So Myriad of Artisan uh, diffusing jewelry pieces that can be uh, purchased. So fabric, clay, uh, my favorite are the ones like little glass jars basically that hang around your neck that actually have the oil in them. So I can continue like yeah, this is on the plane yesterday that I was dabbing some believe oil right there, rubbing it under my nose, over my throat, uh, throughout the flight, uh, throughout all the airports. And so it was a beautiful thing to have that oil like that. Some of my favorite. Yeah. Um, I love if you got young kids, they have these little slap wrist places that have the wool right in there. That's the yellow part that you can put the oil right on there for the children. Um, I love this little lapel uh, thing that my son gave me. I just love this kind of stuff. And um, that's something I just attach to like a, a jacket or like my big wool scarf. And I can put the oils right on there. Oils work so well with wool, just so you know. And of course, once again, we have the tested and true uh, right here, uh, cotton ball. And what you do is if you're going to school or work, you got, you worry about it, or like, you know, let's say someone doesn't want to wear essential oils, but they want the benefits. You can put it right here in a Ziploc bag and just open it and breathe it in and you will still get the same kind of benefit there. And it's quite amazing. So many different ways to use these. Love it. Yes. Yes. I, yes, Pam. I love it on my scarf too. I will do that. One of my favorite things is actually with the hair. And this is if some people have a hard time, uh, if they're really sensitive or actually if their liver is toxic and they, and they have a hard time processing things through that, sometimes they will break out with the oils or something like that. The hair is a great place to put a drop or two of oil and rub that in there. And one of my favorite things is that anytime you get a breeze or you walk by someone, they are uh, loving that as well. <laughs> as well. So it's a it's a win win for everybody. Yeah. I always like to say it's like oil hair instead of like smoker's hair. Has anyone ever smelled like smoker's hair? And you got that gross. smell. I know, gross. But you got the same thing because it's going to last like all day. It's like amazing. And I used to do that all the time with my son when he was younger. And I'd use peppermint on his hair um, for many different reasons. You can look that up. 
and it just worked for what we were using it for. It was amazing. Um, personal diffusing, another way here. And once again, if you don't like the smell, back to whatever. If you don't like the smell, I don't care personally. If I don't like the smell, I just use it down low, I say. So you can rub on your butt, you can rub on the bottom of your feet, the back of your legs, wherever you're not smelling on a regular basis, just get it on so it can do what it needs to do, right? And uh, this one I love, I'll just talk about this real quick. It's important to me, I don't even have one of these on here, I meant to put, you know those nasal inhalers? When you go to Amazon or wherever and buy them, you have to be so careful now because so many of them, the wick is actually a cigarette filter. You have to make sure it's 100% cotton. Otherwise, do not use it because it will actually eat away that inside material and you wouldn't know and you're breathing in all these literally toxic things. So please, if it looks like a cigarette filter, do not use it. It has to be 100% cotton. The same thing here, if you're gonna use diffusing oils with a baby, um, this is wood. If you have this kind of diffuser, this macrame thing, and it's a polished bead, then that oil is going to take off that polish. And now your baby's going to be sucking on it or breathing on it. So you want raw wood and real cotton. And so this is just something that I have and I love um, because you can use the oils on the cotton and you can use it on the wood. It's not going to har harm the baby. They can use it as a diffuser. They can use it as a teether and it just works amazing. Um, Snowy the Owl we have right now, unless something's happened that I'm not aware of. So this is a great diffuser. It has all these little bells and whistles that go along with it. It's a great present for any kind of kid. I just had two girls that were staring at this like googly eyed. I'm gonna give it to them for Christmas. I don't know yet. And uh, there's all these different things you can do. So eight hours of diffusing for why they're sleeping and uh, even has um, an, uh, a noise, uh, white noise option, which is great. So it just helps drown out that noise a little bit. And it's just an amazing diffuser. So that's just a nice, another nice option. With children, I know we're talking about aromatic, but just to make sure in case there's someone out here with brand new grandchild or brand new parent, you know, you can put oils in all the different places you put them for adults. We have a whole kid sense line that has is already pre-diluted. But if you have digize, for example, and you need it for that reason for digestive support, uh, you can just mix a smidge of carrier oil with it, you know, coconut, you know, V6 from Young Living, olive oil if you need to, and you just can rub it on their belly, the bottom of their feet or whatever, right? The main thing with kids is I always like to instruct people is you put it on their wrist because no one's putting their wrist in their eyes. But if you put it on their hands and they're not aware or forget and they touch their eye or the nose or their mouth or wherever, you know, there's going to be a problem. They're going to be a little hot or screaming and you don't know why. So if you put it on the wrist, once again, it's not like you're going to rub your wrist somewhere that it shouldn't be, let's say. And infants love oils too. Three day old, I remember the little baby was so distended in the stomach. We just mixed a little coconut oil and digize. The baby pooped in 20 minutes. It was a beautiful experience for her and the mom because, of course, the mom's brand new and stressed out about it babies love oils too. You just want to be wise with what you're doing once again. If you put a hot oil on and you don't dilute it, or if you put too much, you know, like you wouldn't put as much as a baby that you'd put on me, right? So you just want to be wise. And there's a whole bunch of guidelines that you can uh, look up and research for that. And it's just exciting. And make sure you talk to whoever you spoke to, because there are some guidelines out there that are a little extra. And um, there's many people who have used oils very safely with infants as well. So when we're diffusing, we are diffusing for everyone in our home, including our pets. And there's a lot of stuff out there, especially for cats that can't diffuse around cats. Well, um, two things, uh, or a few things. They love it. They get the benefits just like we do. Uh, you wanna make sure when you're diffusing in a room, always be sure to have a way out for your pet to leave that room where you're diffusing, right? Uh, when you're traveling, great way to help support them if they're stressed or if they get a little nauseous, you know, with motion sickness, uh, pets, kids, adults, happens to all of us, but a great way for just a drop of peppermint uh, or lavender or stress away, right? Because remember, they have a ton more olfactory receptors in their nasal passages than we do. So a little goes a lot longer way with them, but they do love them. And uh, my one of my cat's chairs is right next to me. 
He's in here all the time and this diffuser is going all the time. So he can come and go as he pleases. Um, and all of our pets, they do love them. And I would only use Young Living, of course, for safety, for sure. I know they're not getting chemicals. We're gonna go through a few of our diffusers right here and I think you're muted. I am muted again, darn it. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, Desert Mist Diffuser. This is a water diffuser, it goes for 10 uh, hours. Uh, it is a great gift. Um, it's great to get for yourself. And if you're new with Young Living, your second month of loyalty rewards, you're gonna get this for free, which is like, how exciting is that? You never can have too many diffusers, one for every room in the house. And you do want to make sure that you do clean out your diffusers periodically, because um, sometimes people don't aren't aware of that or don't do that. But it's important to do that. And let's see here. Do you have this one, Danette? Uh, I do, right back here, and uh, one downstairs as well. I love the Aria. I love it. it is American uh, hand hewn maple base. It is a beautiful one. It is our premier, I would say, uh, lasts up to 12 hours right there. And I love that it comes with tangerine and peppermint as well. Mm. And then our rainstone, such a nice manly one, you know, for a uh, dark space and eight hours right there. Love that one. I'm just going to blow through these. The macaron, that one is very nice and comes with three oils, including one of my favorite blends, evergreen essence. So that's a fun one. You know, what I love is that Young Living is, uh, we're always coming out with new diffusers and changing things up. And you see the massive sales that are going on right now. That's because Young Living's already been working for years on new ones to bring us. And they're like, hey, we want to make sure to get these in people's hands so they can be having the benefits of diffusing. So let's make them a great price and get our people using them. So I love that. The USB diffusers. Easy way to have something right there uh, next to your computer that you're breathing. And remember the oils that are good against the positive ions that our computer and electronics are actually uh, giving off. We already talked about the Duet, which is the, our beautiful new one that can have two different oils in it, but it is also an atomizing one, right? So it does not have oil. Uh, same with our Aroma Lux that I showed you before. That one uh, that's on a crazy good sale. And let's talk about the resin burner. This is one of my favorite things is I was on the trip to Egypt with Gary and oh, I don't know, 10 ish years ago. And burning frankincense is such a, an amazing, I, I love the smell of it for one thing, but because of its historical uh, uses and benefits and extreme effectiveness that uh, I love this product. So I think you have one right there going, right? Yep. Can you Is see it the smoke? Yeah. Yeah. You see it all? I love that one. Yeah, look at, see it smoking? Mm-hmm. And there's a great top that comes with it, but I just wanted you guys to be able to see that and just put the frankincense resin right inside of it. And um, I love this diffuser too, just breathing in this frankincense. Yeah, wonderful. And our next little one, just the little gentle mist uh, personal diffuser that we have available as well. So I hope you guys learned some good things. I'm gonna uh, have Stacy close us out, but we're super excited for you guys to diffuse more in your house if you don't diffuse much uh, so that you can be getting the extra benefits that you learned about tonight. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And for this replay, uh, you'll be able to find it in Splash. And if you already house it in the groups that you're in, you'll see it there as well. But we'll get this out to you as just soon as possible this week. And then you can uh, share it and watch it as many times as you need to get this uh, great information. So thank you so much. If you want to, please uh, stay on for our business uh, call. So every Monday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, because that's what I'm in, that uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, we have a health call, and uh, at 8 p.m., we have, usually 8 p.m., we have a, a business call. So thank you so much, and see you next week.